Hey, what's up, guys? Raybar checking in with another market update. Uh, today, you know, it's going to be pretty chill video. Uh, just going to kind of talk a couple stocks, some general um, ideas that I have, and, um, you know, show you guys, you know, what I'm doing right now. You know, overall, the market has uh, been up, um, you know, this last you know week, even month. We've just been kind of trending up and to the right. I think, uh, you know, with inflation numbers and PPI, uh, the producer price index coming in, you know, both better than expected. Uh, we're seeing the market kind of rally as Wall Street decides that, you know, the big money's coming back in. We're going to start pumping it back up and we're going to go from there. If you guys have noticed, I got a bunch of options plays here. Um, I'm going heavy in the options plays because of with this increased volatility and the swing to the upside, uh, premiums are paying out pretty good right now. Uh, as you've seen, the account value is steadily growing over the last couple months. I think it's been about two months. I started at about 7,800 or 7,900, I believe. And here we are at about $10,700. Uh, couple stocks that I want to talk about right now. You know, first, I'd like to go into the financial sec sector. Uh, I think right now they're obviously really well valued. Um, I, I'm going to think about adding a lot more to JP Morgan Chase. They're a clear winner, in my opinion, in the uh, financial sector. Um, they're kind of helping roll out the road work for FedNow. Their technology is, you know, on par with a lot of the fintechs you're seeing. And honestly, I just think that, you know, it's a it's a really good stock to be in, right? Um, the bank did uh, report stronger than expected results for the second quarter. Uh, and I think that, you know, again, going back to the financial trends, banks are going to be benefiting from the, um, you know, elevated interest rates as they're able to lend out more money at a better rate. Um, you know, a couple of the bank stocks, I think Citibank or Citigroup is a little bit in trouble right now. There's some kind of speculation that they're going through it because of, uh, you know, they're closing a lot of their branches, but I think we're seeing that kind of brick and mortar retail um, banking kind of, I don't want to say go by the wayside, but be a thing of the past, right? Uh, another thing is, you know, Wells Fargo shares also uh, rose slightly after, you know, Wall Street confirmed that they also topped the uh, their earnings, right? And, you know, Wells Fargo has been beat up uh, over the last couple of years, you know, with all of their kind of... Um, uh, compliance issues and that whole account fraud situation. But I think, again, the banks are going to be clear winners as we're going to be in this long um, interest rate environment. And I think, you know, even if the Fed decides to stop increasing rates, they're still going to hold rates steady, which I think is going to be the new normal, in my opinion, right? Next, I'm going to go over to uh, United Health. They are a, um, a healthcare company obviously they do a lot of like medical products and uh etc you know healthcare giant you know this morning almost eight percent up they also beat earnings i think what you're seeing now is you're seeing a back-end log of a lot of those elective surgeries and kind of um you know put off medical stuff happen post the pandemic right during the pandemic a lot of things shut down everything was you know covid 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 so with that, a lot of people chose to, you know, forego several medical procedures. And I think we're seeing the benefit um, now um, as we are about three years out. Um, and, you know, other healthcare stocks that rose today were Cigna Health, um, you know, up about 4%, right? Another one that I really want to highlight, you know, it's been in the news for a while. I made a video on it, um, was, is Microsoft, right? Microsoft is honestly a steady winner in my book, you know, what is this last year 39% last 3 months 21% last month 2% and even 5 years 243% right microsoft honestly in my opinion i think they're they're huge right like they're obviously deeply ingrained in the corporate space with their office suite of products um outlook excel powerpoint and you know out, and uh, i already said outlook i meant power bi right the you know, they rose about 2% because I think that a lot of analysts are increasing their um, ratings to a buy due to the uh, artificial intelligence kick, right? You can speculate with artificial intelligence and go with some of these more speculative stocks, but Microsoft, in my opinion, is a clear winner. Uh, 
Nadella, their CEO, Mr. Nadella, excuse me, their CEO, I mean, he changed and revolutionized the company. They were just a software giant. He pushed them into cloud, and that's where you saw the massive uptick in Microsoft explode to. Now he's also doing the, the, the big AI push, which I think is only going to be uh, better, right? Under this leadership team, Microsoft, in my opinion, is going to you know, go to the moon in the next 10 years. Even right now, as valuation is a little high, maybe you want to wait till earnings. Um, so far, we're seeing a lot of companies beat earnings, which I think is not as expected. Um, but I think Microsoft has some room for the upside. They're fighting the FTC um, right now with their... Um, acquisition of um, what's that company man it's slipping my mind right now Activision Blizzard uh, the gaming company that owns Call of Duty uh, World of Warcraft etc they're saying that it's going to reduce competition but honestly I think right now the FTC is just kind of going after the big tech um, you know Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, etc., uh, as big business. But there's nothing illegal going on and honestly that's why you're seeing all the courts kind of shut down the moves to go one of the stocks that I've been disappointed with, you know, you guys went to my story time video, AT&T. Uh, I've been buying AT&T for years now. I mean, since I started investing in the, uh, you know, mid 2000s and, you know, it's just been honestly disappointment after disappointment. Management has been horrific over the last decade. And, you know, the telecom stock today is down, you know, almost 5%. As analysts are starting to downgrade them, uh, citing competition concerns, I think you're seeing T-Mobile, which you know acquired Sprint and integrated, is starting to grow. And honestly, in the next couple of years, it's very well likely that T-Mobile takes AT&T as the second spot, if not the first spot, in the uh, wireless space. I think AT&T has made too many horrible moves um, and lost so much money with Directv and then HBO, uh, etc. Right. So right now, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do um, going into the future with the portfolio. Like I said, I am going to be trading a lot more options to kind of increase my premiums. Uh, you know, I'm making about 30 to 50 bucks, I think, uh, every quarter um, in dividends from the portfolio. So I definitely want to ramp that up. Um, looking to increase my income over the next couple of months, and hopefully I'm able to contribute more to the portfolio, and then we can scale uh, even more so than it has been right now. You know, Tesla again continued on a terror. I'm selling put credit spreads on them because I just don't think that we're going to see it come back down. They are crushing it in the EV space. They have such a moat on all their other competitors. I just think that it's a win-win. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, still got about. Six seven hundred dollars in cash, uh, accruing some interest. You know, I'm not going to do the Robinhood Gold. We can go into that if you guys want to. Um, it's honestly not worth it unless you. I think you have about three to four thousand dollars that is constantly sitting accruing interest just to offset the five dollar a month fee that you're going to pay to own Robinhood Gold. A lot of these um, options positions here are held up by collateral. So you'll see here, I have about six hundred dollars in collateral um, for those. Uh, positions. So I got about 985 in cash. Actually, I'm losing on a couple of them. But you know, that's kind of the name of the game. Typically, when you're going to do spreads, I've noticed you're going to win about eight out of 10 trades. Um, and risk management is going to be key with these positions, right? Um, if you guys have looked over the portfolio, I, you know, I'm doing a dollar a day in a lot of my mainstay stocks, and I'm getting uh, dividends that I have on drip. So you're seeing the shares kind of slowly gain here, um, even though it's one or two here at the at the time of the portfolio. Again, this the whole purpose of this YouTube page is to show you guys how I'm building out a portfolio, how you guys can maximize gains in order to continue to uh, you know work towards financial independence. Uh, here in this my little penny stock section, I again have been going into ORGN Origin Materials. You guys can go back and watch my penny stock I'm buying video to get more information on this. Um, and then MULN, this one, honestly, the only reason I did it was because I was looking at the options premiums and they sell weekly options and I can make about a dollar a week, uh, selling a 50 cent call. Um, and honestly, I only have $18 into the stock or yeah, I got about 18 bucks into the stock. And so in about six to seven weeks, if I can get about two cents, I can basically get all my money back, um, selling calls on that one. So that's the reason why I'm doing that. I bought back into Republic first bank. 
Originally, you guys remember, I'll go down here. I bought in at $74. I ended up selling at 130. So I almost a double up here. Got a 51 cent uh, stock lending payment from this. And then I bought back in at basically the same price I originally did, right? At about 75 cents, I'm comfortable owning the stock. Uh, remember, they had dipped originally because everyone thought that they were uh, Republic First, or I mean, First Republic Bank, which ultimately went bankrupt and got acquired by JP Morgan Chase. Um, which leads me into a whole nother conversation that we can go down. I hope you guys are enjoying the uh, the week. Let me know uh, down in the comments if there's anything that you guys want me to go over, any kind of video topics, any kind of questions. I try to do my best to answer all your comments. I appreciate the love and support. I just cracked 500 subscribers. I'm working towards that um, watch time hours. So if you guys haven't already, go check out some of my playlists and let them run through for the day and learn some stuff, you know, and uh, comment, like, Subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're still here in this part of the video, comment investing. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. See you on Monday. Hopefully, you had a successful week of trading. I'm out.